Hello, Solar Moon here, and here is a tutorial for making a normal map version of a 2D sprite in Blender. Um, normal maps are something that you see a lot in you know games, you know 3D games. You see it a lot, um, but not too much in 2D games. You see it more recently, you know, in the come in the few last few months or years, but not too much since you know some time ago. Um, like for example, Spelunky on the 360 and PC, I, I believe, uses normal maps for its lighting, even though it's a fully 2D game. Um, and so there's other indie games that are in development, uh, stuff that also uses also use normal maps for their lighting. So that's what we're going to show today. Um, Blender's game engine, or yeah, the Blender game engine supports normal mapping, so this is something that can be done in Blender as well. So we have GLSL mode here selected, something that you have to have GLSL enabled and that you have to have a GLSL capable graphics card to take advantage of. So this is our plane, this will be our sprite. This is our lamp and this is um, something that I just pre-programmed, has a, a simple a action um, I made by hand with these little keyframes that just goes around the, uh, the plane and basically just shows the, uh, the light you're taking effect. Okay. And then we have this little cube up here, and it's running a simple script that is setting uh, MIP mapping, or, or disabling MIP mapping rather, so that any textures displayed in the game uh, are, are nice and sharp. Okay, so first things first, let's go ahead and take a look at our image here. So this is an NPC from Giren. <laughs> it is a uh, rather fashionable eagle robot. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that's... It is exactly what it looks like. Okay, cool. So this is our character. This is our character. So the first, things we're, uh, first thing we're going to do is duplicate him and set his color, um, or rather desaturate his colors. And the reason for this is because the normal map we're going to create is going to be based off the height value, or the, um, I guess you could say the brightness of the mesh. So like the lighter areas are further forward and the darker areas are further back, if I understand it. So basically, uh, you really should pixel it by hand if you wanted a more accurate lighting map, if you wanted a more accurate normal normal map. But due to time constraints, you know, there's unless you really like had a lot of time on your hands, you probably wouldn't do it by hand. And the outcome with you know just um, grayscaling the image works okay still. So this is the diffuse layer basically, and this is the specular speculative speculative specular layer. Um, that we're going to be looking at. Good and good. Nice. Now we're, what we're going to do is also um, auto normalize it so that the brightest areas areas are white and the darkest areas are black. Next what we're going to do is go ahead and apply the normal map filter or plugin. Um, this is something that I believe I had to download for Windows but I believe it's something that comes with GIMP for Mac. So if you have Mac or Linux you might not have to download it and install it at all. If you have Windows, then you might have to, or it might be there al already by default. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's something that you have to check. You, you might have it by, by default. So anyway, go into Filters, Map, and then select Normal Map. And so there's the um, there's the, the default Normal Map. And you can click pre 3D Preview to have a 3D uh, check or, or test to see what it's going to look like in the game engine when it's finished. Uh, I find that by default, like the ambient color is way up there, you want it to be darker. You want to use for diffuse the diffuse layer, and then um, this, for the gloss, the speculative specular specular layer. And you can also enable specular lighting if you really want to, although it doesn't really assist that much. Oops, it doesn't really assist that much um, for our purposes. So you probably see it doesn't look very good. <laughs> I mean, just the core, what it boils down to, it doesn't look very good in this little thing. And it is, in addition to being blurry, the actual effect doesn't look correct. Well, there's a couple of reasons for this. Um, the first is really, we, we probably wouldn't have specular lighting in on a you know organic character because it looks kind of fake and, and planar. Um, but more importantly, the actual normal map itself is incorrect. Uh, if I'm correct, I keep I keep second guessing myself because I, I feel like I'm not. But it looks like it's punched in, right? It looks like it's kind of like an embossed version. If you invert Y, then you see it kind of pops out. The upper areas are brighter. The upper areas of the scarf are brighter. You know, stuff like that. And you can uh, change the scale here to make the effect more pronounced and get kind of a, a more you know understandable uh, normal map. 
Now you probably won't want anything like 100 or anything like that. Um, if anything, overshoot it just a little bit because you can back it down in Blender, but you don't want to crush the normal map and lose detail. So like, I'm crushing the normal map right here basically. Like the higher I go, the less finesse there is between the lighter and darker, or rather the brighter and darker areas in the image, and it's just kind of getting really muddy and, and junky. Um, also, there's less finesse being applied on the actual colors of the normal map, so it's really, you know, not turning out very well. So you don't want to go too far, but um, something, you know, where you, you pretty much are, are reaching the, the stretches of the uh, normalization process, I think would be a good uh, outcome. And also, um, as for the actual settings here, you have a few settings to work with. You probably don't want to mess with any, too much of any of these except for scale and the filter itself. Um, different filters provide different looks, different normal ma normal mapping uh, effects to the, or I guess uh, normal mapping yeah effects to the outcome. So you can see like it gets really blurry with nine by nine. Um, it's three by three is a little blurrier than four examples. So you can kind of you know try different ones. Four samples seems to work really well for me, so I don't really try different other uh, ones. I just kind of go with it. So you see that it looks, once again, doesn't really look very good on this. Um, yeah, it just it just doesn't really look too great. Uh, yeah, I would, <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure why it doesn't look too great. I think it's because of the, the first off, fact that it's on a plane, and when our, our, our sprite isn't going to be on a plane, and second off, it's blurry. So neither of that those are really helping. So anyway, that's our image. Um, that's our, our normal map. Uh, once again, don't crush it too much. We'll go with we'll just say two. Um, if you go for if you go too far or more than necessary, you can always crank it down in Blender. It goes from zero to one in Blender. You can push the dial further, but the normal mapping effect only goes from zero to one or negative one to zero. So you can go with negative values as well. But generally, you know, if it's too far here, you can just crank it down. All right. So there's our normal mapping. Uh, normal mapped. Um, sprite, go over to Blender, select select the plane, and we want to go ahead and, and give it a UV map because that's what we're going to um, use for to, to map the character's texture to. We go ahead and set the diffuse color to, to white or a value of uh, 1.0 so that it's as close as possible to um, the colors we have predefined here. Um, we don't want it to be shadeless because obviously normal mapping wouldn't really change much if the there's no lighting. Um, we have the alpha blend mode set to alpha clip, like the texture itself or the sprite itself. You know, either it's binary here, either it's transparent or it's not. And then we set transparency on and set the alpha to zero. Then we make a new uh, texture. And this is going to be the character's diffuse layer. We set the type to image. And then we open up the character diffuse um, texture. We um, set the mapping coordinates to UV mode. So that it's going to use the UV uh, coordinates of the plane. And then we have it influence the diffuse color and alpha. And so there's our, our character there. And once again, it's nice and crisp due to uh, the, the cube turning off mip mapping in that little script. Um, one thing that we want to do is probably turn off specularity. It just doesn't lo really look too great for our character, for at least an, or or an organic character. Note that if you did want specularity, you know, um, on certain parts of the sprite, then you could actually program that in, um, or rather, sprite that in by you know once again kind of going over your sprites and hand pixeling them so that certain areas are shiny and other areas are dark. Okay, so. Um, the next thing we're, we're going to do is apply the actual normal map. So let's go ahead and make a new texture again. This is going to be the character. This is going to be the character normal or the character in uh, layer. We're going to load in that image, set it to use those coordinates, um, and also turn on normal map. We don't want it to influence the diffuse color. We want it to influence the normal. And so there's the result pretty simple. Know that if it's once again too heavy, then you can always back it down a little bit like so by just typing in different numbers. Um, and there's, you know, nor no normal mapping. 
there, the tiny bit of normal mapping, right there, it's almost invisible. <laughs> um, there's about half as much, which is probably a good amount, pretty good amount. So you can see how it almost looks 3D in, in certain instances. Um, it would look probably better with you know a more high def sprite, but this is pretty good. Um, you can see how it, when it goes behind the sprite, the kind of back faces of the uh, sprite still sh show up as you know being bright, which is a nice effect. You know, kind of like if a light was behind a character who is 3D, it would kind of come around the edges of his arms or back or head or whatever, and that's kind of the same effect you're seeing on this little 2D, you know, non three dimensional sprite, which is a cool effect. Uh, still. So anyway, that's a kind of just a b basic little uh, example showing how to get some nice uh, cool 3D lighting effects in Blender uh, in inside the Blender game engine. One last thing I wanted to mention, um, changing the mit mapping mode to be disabled can be harder on the on the GPU of the computer. So it's it should be fine if you're making just a simple 2D game, but if you're making like a 3D first person, you know, sprawling adventure with all these like PS1 style crisp textures and or rather I don't know maybe Nintendo DS or something style um, really crisp textures then you might run into some issues so uh, just be aware of that it might be something that could be fixed in the future um, but I, this is the only way to get really crisp textures apart from really making uh, or just making really large textures like you know four or eight times the size that you really want to design the map alright well thanks very much for watching and uh, you have fun